Today, inshallah, we'll be continuing from verse number 56 of Surah Ahzab. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Indeed, Allah confers blessing upon the Prophet and his angels ask him to do so. And you who have believed ask Allah to confer blessing upon him and ask Allah to grant him peace. This verse is the recognition and expression of the great station of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala orders believers to send salawat to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the verse is to establish that he himself sends salawat to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam along with the angels which elevates the importance of this noble act. Now a question comes to mind, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his salawat in the same way that angels and believers send salawats? Scholars explain that the nature of salawat is different depending on who is sending it to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends salawat, it means he is showering his mercy upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and praising him in front of his angels. And when angels send salawat, they are praying for him and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his blessings upon him. And then when believers send salawat to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are praising Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well as making dua for him. So there are different degrees and natures of Salawat, depending on who is sending it, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this verse mentions two commands, sending salawat as well as salam to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Sahaba, Rulla Ta'ala Anhum, understood how to perform salam, which is to greet Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with As-Salamu Alaikum, or to recite the salam in the tashahud. As-Salamu Alaikum, Ayyuhan Nabi wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. But they were curious about the salawat as to what is the procedure to send salawat to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As it comes in a narration narrated by Ka'b ibn Ujra, Radha Ta'ala Anun Nasai, he says, Qila ya Rasulullah, amma salamu alayka faqad arafnahu, fakayfa salatu? Qala, ulu Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallita ala ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, it was said, O oh Allah's Messenger, we know how to greet you, but how to say salawat for you? The Prophet said this durood, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ila al-akhir. There are many ahadiths with different wordings about the durood, the recitation of salawat, and one of the most recommended duruds is durood Ibrahimi, which is uh, what is recited in tashahud during Salah. And when it comes to durood, sending salawat, there are a few things to keep in mind. When we hear the name of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is wajib, obligatory to say durood upon him, as it comes in the form of a warning in one of the hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, رَغِمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ ذُكِتُ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيَّ May the man before whom I am mentioned, and he does not send salawat upon me, be humiliated. And another hadith designate a person as stingy for not sending salawat. Narrated by Ali Ta'ala Anhu and Tirmidhi, Nabi Sallallahu said, Al-Bakhilu ladhi man dhukirtu indahu falam yusalli alayya. The stingy person is the one before whom I am mentioned, and he does not send salawat upon me. But if the name of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned multiple times in a sitting, in a single sitting, scholars say that saying the durood once would fulfill the obligation, but it is mustahab to say it every time. In fact, if you look at the practice of hadith scholars, they never resorted to skip the salawat when narrating a hadith and when writing a hadith every time the name of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appeared, whether it was multiple times in the same narration or in the same sentence. SubhanAllah, such was the practice of our uh, hadith scholars and we should reflect it in our action by repeating the salawat every time his name comes. 
Now, there are many virtues of sending salawat to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is part of the etiquettes of dua to send duru to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Narrated by Fadalat ibn Ubaid, Allah Ta'ala on Sunnah Nabi Dawood, he says, Sami'a Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rajulan yad'u fi salatihi lam yumajjid Allah Ta'ala wa lam yusalli ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Faqala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ajil hadha. Thumma da'ahu faqala lahu aw li ghayrihi يَصَلَّ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَبْدَأْ بِتَحْمِيدِ رَبِّهِ جَلَّ وَعَزْ وَالثَّنَاءِ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ يُصَلِّ عَلَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثُمَّ يَدْعُوا بَعَدُوا بِمَا شَاء So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, heard a person supplicating during prayer. He did not mention the greatness of Allah SWT nor did he invoke blessings on the Prophet The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said he made haste. He then called him and said either to him or to another person, if any of you prays, he should mention the exaltation of his Lord in the beginning and praise him. He should then invoke blessings on the Prophet ﷺ. Thereafter, he should supplicate Allah for anything he wishes. So durood is an essential part of every dua. And then there is a lot of encouragement by Nabi to send durood in abundance. As we learn from another narration narrated by Ubay bin Ka'ab, Anhu in Tirmidhi, he says, Ya Rasulullah, inni ukthiru salata alayka, fakam aj'alu laka min salati, faqala ma shi'ta, qala qultu rub'u, qala ma shi'ta, fain zidta fahuwa khayru lak, qultu an nisf, qala ma shi'ta, fain zidta fahuwa khayru lak, qala qultu fathuluthayn, qala ma shi'ta, fain zidta fahuwa khayru lak, qultu aj'alu laka salati kullaha, qala idha tukfa hammaka, wa yufaru laka dhambuk. O Messenger of Allah, so this is what the Sahabi is saying, asking Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O Messenger of Allah, indeed I say very much salawat upon you. How much of my dua should be the salawat for you? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you wish. So the Sahabi asked, a fourth? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you wish, but if you add more, it would be better for you. So I said, then half? He said, as you wish. And if you add more, it would be better for you. Sahabi said again, then two thirds. He said, as you wish, but if you add more, it would be better for you. I said, should I make all of my dua as salafat for you? Nabi Sallallahu said, then your problems would be solved and your sins will be forgiven. So the more salafat you send, the more Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will bring ease to you in this world and the hereafter. SubhanAllah. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared a tenfold blessing in return of a single salawat. Narrated by Abdullah bin Abi Talha radhi ta'ala anhu from his father in Sunan Nisai, he says, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ja'a yadata yawmin wal bushra fi wajhihi. Faqulna inna lana ral bushra fi wajhik. Faqal, innahu atani al malaku. Faqal, ya Muhammad, inna rabbaka yaqulu. أَمَا يُرْضِيكَ أَنَّهُ لَا يُصَلِّي عَلَيْكَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا صَلَّيْتَ عَلَيْهِ عَشْرًا وَلَا يُسَلِّمْ عَلَيْكَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا سَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ عَشْرًا The Messenger of Allah وسلم, came one day with a cheerful expression on his face and we said, we see you looking cheerful. He replied, the angel came to me and said, O Muhammad, your Lord says, will it not please you to know that no one will send salah upon you that I will send salah upon him tenfold? And no one will send salams upon you, but I will send salams upon him tenfold. Subhanallah. Such is the blessing of saying durood, sending salawat, sending salam to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we can send the salawat to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam any time of the day and any day of the week. But there's a special mention in a narration to send salawat, more salawat on Fridays. Narrated by Aus bin Aus, Surah Ta'ala, in the Sunnah Nabi Dawood, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ مِنْ أَفْضَلِ أَيَّامِكُمْ يَوْمَ الْجُمُعَةِ فِيهِ خُلِقِ عَادَمُ وَفِيهِ قُبِدَ فَفِيهِ النَّفْخَةُ وَفِيهِ السَّعْقَةُ فَأَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ فِيهِ فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيَّ Among the most excellent of your days is Friday. On it, Adam was created. On it, he died. On it, the last trumpet will be blown. And on it, the shout will be made. So invoke more blessings on me that day for your blessings will be submitted to me. We should try to make our habit, especially on Fridays, but any day of the week, to send as much salawat, 
Again, doing dhikr doesn't take a lot of effort. It could be in any state you're in. It could be in your heart. But it is more of a remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا Indeed, those who abuse Allah and His Messenger, Allah has cursed them in this world and the hereafter and prepared for them a humiliating punishment. يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ means يُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ وَيَعْصُونَهُ They associate partners with Him and disobey Him. And لعنهم الله means أبعدهم وطردهم من كل خير. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repelled them away and expelled them from all goodness. The previous verses mention the unintentional pain caused to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by believers due to their ignorance. For example, entering the house of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam abruptly without permission or showing up early for the invitation or staying too late after dinner, etc. Now this verse is referring to the pain and affliction caused by disbelievers and hypocrites to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intentionally, whether it was physically, verbally, or emotionally. Scholars mention various incidents as the reason for revelation of this verse, including the taunts hurled at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon marrying Safiya bint Huyayi ta'ala anha after Khaybar. And Allah knows best. When you read the verse carefully, you notice that it mentions causing pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So naturally a question comes to mind, how is it possible to cause pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we know that He is above such emotions and effects? Scholars provide a couple of interpretations in this regard. First interpretation is that this pain is referring to the acts of disobedience, like associating partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or denying His names and attributes, or cursing time, or drawing animate pictures, etc. This interpretation is supported by what comes in a narration narrated by Abu Rada Ta'ala and in Bukhari, Nabi Sallallahu said, قال الله تعالى يؤذينني ابن آدم يسب الدهر وأنا الدهر بيد الأمر أقلب الليل والنهار Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, the son of Adam hurts me by abusing time, for I am time. In my hands are all things and I cause the revolution of night and day. So this narration also mentions uh, the same term, yudhinani. The second interpretation is that the pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denotes the intensity of the sin of inflicting uh, pain to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the verse is referring to causing pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only to emphasize the pain to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is supported by a narration narrated by Abdullah bin Mughaffal in Tirmidhi. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allah, Allah fi ashabi la tattikhidhuhum ghardan ba'di wa man ahabbahum fa bi hubbi ahabbahum wa man abghadahum fa bi bughdi abghadahum wa man adahum faqad adani wa man adani faqad adallaha wa man adallaha fayushiku an yakhudahu Fear Allah Fear Allah regarding my companions. Do not make them objects of insults after me. Whoever loves them, it is out of love of me that he loves them. And whoever hates them, it is out of hatred for me that he hates them. And whoever harms them, he has harmed me. And whoever harms me has offended Allah. And whoever offends Allah, then he shall soon be punished. From these two narrations, we learn that the pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could mean the acts of his disobedience, or indirectly it could refer to the pain caused to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah knows best. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا And those who harm believing men and believing women for something other than what they have earned, have certainly borne upon themselves a slander and manifest sin. Ihtamalu means irtakabu, committed. This verse warns of the severity of inflicting pain to believers, both men and women. It reprimands the acts of teasing believing men and women by spreading rumors about them. As it comes in a narration narrated by Abu Hurairah Ta'ala and Muslim, he says, أَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْغِيبَةِ قَالُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمُ قَالَ ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهُ قِيلَ أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ فِي أَخِي 
ما اقول قال ان كان فيه ما تقول فقد اغتبته وان لم يكن فيه فقد بهته do you know what is backbiting so nabi sallallahu asked his companions they replied allah and his messenger knows best thereupon the prophet sallallahu alaihi said backbiting implies you're talking about your brother in a manner which he does not like it was said to him what is your opinion about uh, the situation that if I actually find that fault in my brother, which I mentioned, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi replied, if that fault is actually found in him, then you in fact have backbited. And if it does not, that you have slandered him. SubhanAllah. So such is the intensity of the sin of slander that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala points it out here uh, that if someone were to harm a believing man or a believing woman, uh, with regards to saying things that they do not uh, deserve, then this is uh, a slander. And the punishment of slander is severe. And we see this behavior commonly in uh, different settings, whether it is as a gossip in a social setting or just on uh, social media when uh, people are slandering in others, whether it is their political leaders or religious scholars, if they have a difference of opinion and they hear something which they have not even verified, they start putting it out there in social media and that could become a source of punishment for them and they'll be liable to answering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this action. We should be very careful whether in a gathering or on social media uh, to spread news about others without confirming. And uh, even if it's true, it should be uh, in a constructive way, not to degrade the honor of someone. So we see a general guideline of interaction uh, and respect among believers in the narration. Narrated by Abu Rayl Taala and the Nasai, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Al-Muslim man salim al-nas min lisani hu yadhi, wal-mu'minu man amina hu nas wa ala dimaihim wa amwalihim." The Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the people are safe. And the mu'min is the one from whom the people's lives and wealth are safe. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'il mu'minina yudinina alayhinna min jalabibihin thalika adna an yu'rafna fala yu'zayin wa kana allahu ghafura rahima O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves their outer garments. That is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Yudinina alayhinna means yurkhina ala ru'usihinna wa wujuhihinna wa sudurihinna that they wear it on their heads, faces and chests. Jalabibihinna means uh, refers to al-jilbab, al-rida, uh, so the garment or shawl that covers a woman's body and her beauty. So they are distinguished by their covering and protection and no harm befalls them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders Muslim women to cover themselves when leaving homes out of their needs. Notice that all believing women are addressed in this verse, including the wives and the daughters of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no exception. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala also describes the extent of covering by using the word jilbab, which refers to a piece of garment that covers them from head to toe. And there might be some confusion about uh, the definition of jilbab. Some people might think that this is not the head to toe covering, but we get an explanation from Ibn Abbas Taala Anhu. What was Jalbab and how were the women covering themselves uh, at that time? So the covering was from head to toe uh, to the point where only their left eye was open. The rest of the body was covered from head to toe. So such was the practice of women at the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Next, the reason for this order is mentioned. ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَ فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ that it is for their own protection 
so they're not bothered and harmed by people. And finally, Asmatal ends the verse by reminding them, meaning he is most forgiving of whatever happened in the days of Jahiliyyah since they were unaware of this command. Let's pause and reflect on this verse for a moment. We see some people in our society rationalize that the need of covering is no longer in the modern world since the days of Jahiliyyah are over and human civilization has become much more mature. Others claim that the covering was specific to the wives and daughters of Nabi Sallallahu and not broadly applicable to public. This um, verse clarifies all such doubts. The ruling of covering is for all believing women and for all times. Another thing to note is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala even mentioned the form of the veil as jilbab, full covering, which clearly indicates that the purpose of this covering is not to expose the beauty of woman's body. Today, unfortunately, you see even believing women with good intentions and, and they're trying to practice their faith, they're wearing a headscarf and yet the, the shape of the body, the contours of the body are still exposed due to their tight clothing. This is against the purpose uh, and the intention of hijab. Nabi Salaam described the woman with inappropriate clothing that their destiny would be in hellfire. Narrated by Abu Hurairah Ta'ala and on Muslim, Nabi Salaam said, Sinfani min ahli nari lam arahuma qawmun ma'ahum siyatun ka adnaab al-baqari yadribuna bihan nasa wa nisa'un ka siyatun aariyatun mamilatun ma'ilatun ru'usahunna ka asnimati al-bukhti al-ma'ilati la yadkhulna al-jannata wa la yajidna rihaha wa inna rihaha la yujadu min masirati kada wa kada there are two types of people who will enter the hellfire whom I have not as yet seen. People having whips similar to ox tails with which they will beat people. And secondly, women who will be dressed yet appear to be naked. They will seduce men and be inclined towards them. Their heads will be like the swaying humps of both camels. Uh, they will neither enter paradise nor smell its fragrance even though its fragrance can be smelt from such and such distance. Allah Akbar, this is not a light matter by any means. When we see women wearing semi-nude or even transparent clothing in our society today, this will be a source of severe punishment. May Allah SWT give us all the guidance and save us all from being in that predicament. Ameen. لَإِن لَّمْ يَنْتَهِ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِم مَّرَضٌ وَالْمُرْجِفُونَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ لَنُغْرِيَنَّكَ بِهِمْ ثُمَّ لَا يُجَاوِرُونَكَ فِيهَا إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مَّلْعُونِينَ أَيْنَمَا ثُقِفُوا أُخِذُوا وَقُتِّلُوا تَقْتِيلًا If the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is disease and those who spread rumors in Medina do not cease, we will surely incite you against them. Then they will not remain your neighbors therein except for a little. Accursed wherever they are found, being seized and massacred completely. Maradun means shakkun or ribatun, doubt. Murjifuna means alladina yanshurun al akhbar al kadiba, those who spread false news. We will surely make you rule over them. And لا يجابرونك meaning لا يساكنونك They will not live with you. And ثقفوا means وجدوا They are found. Allah SWT in these two verses issues a strong warning for hypocrites and those who used to spread rumors of wars to spread anxiety in the Muslim community that if they did not stop this behavior they will be sought and killed without any refuge and Muslims will be given power over them. Sunnat Allah fi alladheena khalaw min qabl wa la tajda li sunnat Allah tabdeela This is the established way of Allah with those who passed on before and you will not find in the way of Allah any change. Sunnat Allah min tariqatahu fi al-munafiqeen al-qatl wal asr So in this verse it means his practice with hypocrites of captivity and killing. Khalaw means malaw, past. 
and tabdila means tahwila or tawira change. Meaning this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with hypocrites. When they persist in their disbelief and their treachery, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes believers overpower them to the point where if they do not um, if they do not repent, they are captured and killed. So we'll stop here, inshallah. Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta samin alim, wa tawa alayna, innaka anta tawa rahim.